Oh, man. The Vancouver Canucks. Don't do this. Don't do this. The Vancouver Canucks right now are Natasha Romanoff. They're coming up to me in the rain in Tokyo, and they're giving me hope. Don't do that. Don't give me hope. Don't give me hope as the team goes out there and wins their first regulation game in who knows how many days. It's not overtime. It's not a shootout. It's not a 6-5, 5-4, 7-6 type of game. It's 5-2. The Vancouver Canucks literally allow only two goals against in the game. You know the last time the Canucks walked away from a game with only two goals against? It was the beginning of the month, 20 days ago against Arizona. That was also an overtime win, so not in regulation, but this is the very first Canucks regulation win since, when was that? 5-1 against Vegas, November 26? It's been a month. The Vancouver Canucks had such a bad stretch where they were losing these games, getting blown out of these games, while also coming back and tying other games, but it wasn't really ever like this. It was never like this. It was kind of like the opposite of what we had seen. John Shorthouse said at the end of the broadcast that as the Vancouver Canucks in the first game of the season took a 3-0 lead against Edmonton and then blew it, lost 5-3, the opposite kind of happened here as Vancouver takes a 5-2 win against the Oilers after they were down 2 to nothing, They were kept in the game by Colin Delia, and with two goals from JT Miller, two goals from Bo Horvat, and a goal from Ilya Mikheyev, the Canucks ultimately walk away out of Edmonton as the victors. And I don't like how this game is giving me hope because I made a video that we're going to be uploading tomorrow about Bo Horvat potentially getting traded to the Canadians, talking about that Sportsnet article that was published by Ryan Dixon earlier this week. And I was like, okay, well, I can record that video in the second or the first period intermission, excuse me, of this Canucks on the Oilers game because that's about 16 minutes of time to get all my thoughts and opinions out there, right? But then they won after. Like, now I don't know what I want to do with that audio. You know, we're still going to upload it. We're going to do whatever we need to do. But, like, at the same time, the Vancouver Canucks have come back from an absolutely terrible stint where they were losing 5-1 to one without Elias Pettersson to winning a game today where Bo Horvat is kind of the reason they won. Take that, Satir Shah. Okay, no, I'm not going to say that to Satir Shah. But either way, all the crap that we had given Bo Horvat this past little while, I feel like this game was the redemption tour. This game was the vindication for him to take all that anger and all those emotions and the feedback and just lay it out there on the ice. You think I can't win my team games? You think I'm not doing the right things as a captain to help our team win games? Well, here's two goals and two assists. How about it? Now, for me personally, I'm not going to go out there and sour grape over that. I love that. Bo Horvat won me the week. I scratched Nazem Kadri tonight in fantasy because I had Bo Horvat and Jack Hughes both available to play and only two spots available. I picked Hughes and I picked Horvat because I was like, yeah, I always got to believe in my captain. Even if he absolutely sucks, I still put him in the lineup. And guess what? He gets all the points in the world here today. In a game where the Canucks honestly felt like they were going to blow it again after 20 minutes of action. Colin Delia gets the start because Spencer Martin had played yesterday against the Seattle Kraken. And, you know, I was kind of shaky in my opinions as Colin Delia was suiting up in the game. I was thinking, okay, last time we had seen Delia, he came in relief and he won. But at the same time... I thought he was so unorthodox in the way he made saves, and I felt he was a little bit shaky that I was not really all too confident that he would actually do a good job here, and lo and behold, the goals that he allowed were not his fault at all. The first one was a breakaway scored by Derek Ryan 10 minutes into the first period, and that was a bad play by Ilya Mikheyev, I believe, who, down low, decided to throw it right back up the middle, but it wasn't taken by any of the Canucks that were there. A few moments later, the lead pass finds its way to Ryan, and he walks in all alone. Delia can't make the save because Ryan kind of outweights him and gets Delia to bite early, go down in the spread eagle a bit early, and he's able to walk around, put it into the open cage. And then the final goal that the Oilers scored, the second of the period actually ending off the first 20 minutes of the game, terrible clearing attempt by Oliver Ekman Larson with about 10 seconds left. It's like he looked up at the clock and said, okay, well, there's 10 seconds left. I can just kind of lob it out and it's going to be whatever. No, he doesn't do it hard enough. It stays in the zone. It's kept in by the Oilers and 
It's Zach Hyman who goes to the side of the goal, throws it back out in front, and Connor McDavid buries it with like two seconds to go. Colin Delia, sorry, he can't do anything on that. Like, you got beat by the guy that was wide open on the back door, and he had an open net to shoot at. That's not your fault. That's Oliver Ekman Larson for the clear, and everybody else who wasn't able to pounce on that and kind of pressure the Oilers into giving it up with five, four, three, eventually two seconds to go in the period. I was kind of thinking, okay, now we can record our video for tomorrow about Bo Horvat and the Canadians, and I'll just vent on my frustration there, in a way. But it turns out that was all for naught, as the second period comes along and the Canucks get a goal off of one of the strangest plays we have seen all year. He thought that McCann goal from yesterday was bad, well this one's probably even worse. It's Connor Garland who frees the puck up on the side, he throws it up into the middle for JT Miller who is at the very, very top of the slot. He just fires one towards the goal, it goes off a of Stuart Skinner's shoulder, pop flies up into the air, and then it plops right back down behind him in the goal. What a terrible goal scored by JT Miller, but the guy has his first 5v5 goal in what seems to be forever. Just a few days ago, we made a video talking about how Miller is so bad at producing 5-on-5 five five that he's actually one of the worst players on the team, or in the top six at least, at producing in that sort of metric. And he goes out there and gets one here to bring the Canucks back within one. And then, at the end of the second period, Miller gets yet another one. This was off of a very strange play where the Vancouver Canucks are on the power play. I noticed that on this man advantage, Bo Horvat did not look all too good. He kind of fumbled the puck a little bit, he healed it a bit as well. And eventually, after trying to center the pass back to Hughes, the puck bounces off of his stick blade in a weird way, and it sets Connor McDavid up for a breakaway, except Connor McDavid ends up falling down. Now, he ends up clamoring to the referee, he wants a call on Hughes, who was the guy trying to take McDavid away from the puck, but the referee says, nah, the Canucks are still in the power play, the Canucks come back up the ice, and it's Bo over to Petey, the shot, the rebound in front is right there for Miller, who buries it and ties the game with a few minutes to go. McDavid shorthanded is scary, but the guy was frustrated as all heck, and I believe as a result, the referees gave McDavid a call afterwards, as Curtis Lazar kind of gave him a little tap on the hands. They called Lazar for slashing, which was honestly not an incorrect call, just really soft. You could definitely tell that was a makeup call in the way they gave it out, and eventually the Oilers are not able to score on the power play. Which was nice, because Colin Delia made an incredible amount of saves in this entire game. There were multiple power play chances for the Oilers, and Delia stopped them all. Cross creases, plays out in front, you had Canucks scrambling to block shots and clear it out. It was definitely frantic, and it was definitely anxiety-inducing, but the PK got it done. And you know who else got it done? Bo Horvat. Because with about seven minutes to go, it's Quinn Hughes who, for some reason, is down in the Oilers' corner fighting for the puck. He eventually retreats, and Connor Garland is the guy who comes away with it. He circles around to the opposite side, gets over to the faceoff circle, throws it back to the point. The long shot comes, but it ends up deflecting behind the end boards and popping out to the back side, where Bo Horvat is there to scoop the puck into the open cage kind of Bieksa to Lapierre-esque, where the demon ricocheted the puck off like a pinball to the open back door. Bo Horvat gives the Canucks the lead, and then we have about four minutes of uninterrupted play afterwards. And this play ends off as Bo Horvat in the offensive zone, while viciously holding onto the puck, is able to make a play while falling down, throwing it over to the slot, where Ilya Mikheyev buries it off the post and in, giving the Canucks the two-goal lead, with about two minutes left. The Oilers then pull out the goalie, it's empty net, 6 on 5, and after a few failed clearing attempts where the Canucks were trying to get a little bit too fancy in how they were setting up Garland for that empty net goal, it's Elias Pettersson in the neutral zone who makes a very good play to throw it out for Bo. He gets a breakaway on the empty net, he scores. It's his fourth point on the night, second goal of the game. This is what I mean, man. He absolutely did better than Nazem Kadri tonight. And I know that game is still going on, but still... Horvat with two goals, two assists, Miller with two goals, you have Pedersen with multiple assists. This team had gone out there and done a very good job against an Oilers squad that has such a hot power play. They shut that power play down. Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid with a goal and an assist each. And that's it. The Canucks stars, by the way. Multiple goals from Miller, multiple from Horvat, multiple assists from Petey. All's well in Canuck land for tonight only, but uh, yeah. 
that's the holiday break for y'all. Talk to the counselor your thoughts about this Canucks win against the Oilers. The comeback being down to nothing and clawing with five unanswered goals afterwards to win in regulation. I hope you enjoyed this finish. Nine and bye.